Welcome to part 10 of creating visual movie effects in Blender. In this video, we're going to be creating a lightsaber effect. Let's go ahead and check out the final result. As you can see in the video, when I first start off, the lightsaber is not turned on. I can turn it on. The lightsaber will extend. I can wave it around slowly a little bit, and then I can turn the lightsaber off at the end. So this is an extending lightsaber that we'll be creating in this video. Let's go ahead and dive in. I'll click on the splash screen to get rid of it. The first thing I'll mention though is that if you are new to my tutorials, go ahead and click on the subscribe button below. If you like this video and you want to learn how to use more technology, including Blender, go ahead and subscribe to this channel to see more videos just like this one. All right, in this video, we're going to be creating a lightsaber in 3D. Uh, that means that we're going to be using 3D objects. We'll be using meshes as well as bones or armature objects. We'll be using empties and constraints. So if you're not familiar how to use the 3D element of Blender and not just the visual effects element of Blender, uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link to a card that's a little eye that if you hover over this video right now, and you put your mouse over the top right corner of, up here and you click on the eye, you'll see a link uh, to a video specifically on bones if you're new to bones. And I'll put a link up there as well uh, to my general Blender 2.7 tutorial playlist. Okay, we'll also be doing tracking in this video because I have got some footage that I'll show you in just a second of me waving around a toy lightsaber. I actually just went out and bought this uh, not so long ago specifically for this video. We'll also be doing masking, and that means we'll be covering up parts of the lightsaber that we don't want to have in the final resulting video. Uh, we'll also be using nodes for compositing and creating the glowing effect of the lightsaber. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing I want to do is I want to actually create my lightsaber in 3D. So we'll start off actually in this 3D viewport. I'm going to select the default cube and press X on my keyboard to get rid of it. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure my 3D cursor, that's that thing that you left click to put around, is exactly at 000 in the middle of your scene. So I'm going to go ahead and press Shift C on my keyboard. Shift C will put that 3D cursor back in the middle and it'll zoom your scene out so you can see everything. And I'm going to press Shift A to bring up my add menu. I'm going to go ahead and add a mesh cylinder. That's because our lightsaber is going to be a cylinder, but this is way too fat of a cylinder. So let's go ahead and press S on our keyboards and then Shift Z. And Shift Z will scale on the X and Y. So Shift Z, after you press S, negates the Z axis. And now I can scale on the X and Y and not Z. All right, let's go ahead and make it quite narrow, right about like that. Um, by the way, if you zoom in and it kind of gets stuck and you can't zoom in farther, if you have your object selected that you want to zoom into and you go to View and then View Selected, it will zoom into that object and now you can zoom uh, and scroll uh, freely to zoom in. All right, let's go ahead and move this up. So I'll just drag it up on the Z axis and I'm going to add another object right in the middle. So again, I can press Shift C if you move your 3D cursor around. And I'm going to add a bone. I'm just going to go to View Selected again. I'm going to add this time a bone or it's really called an armature. And the way you do that, it's the same way that you add anything else. You go to your Add menu. So I'll press Shift A. I'm going to add an armature, a single bone armature. And then I'll actually put a bone starting right at that 000 point, if you had your 3D cursor there, and it'll stick up straight from there. The first thing I'll do though is with this bone selected, I'm going to go over here to the Properties window, and I'll find with the bone selected the Armature tab, and I'm going to change the bone display uh, to X-ray, and I'll change the bone shape from octahedral to B-bone, and that will make it more like a rectangle. Let's go ahead now, and by the way, X-ray means that you can see the bones through the objects, but if you press one and five on your number pad, you can see your scene from straight on, and you can see that from the side view as well, that it's right in the middle. So you know it's right in the middle, even though you can see it through the mesh looks kind of funny. All right, with the bone selected, I'm gonna go into the bones edit mode. So I'll press tab on my keyboard, and I'm gonna grab um, the ball at the top of the bone, and I'm going to drag that straight up. Again, we're in edit mode, uh, right about, and I'll press Z on my keyboard to go into wireframe so that it matches the top of that mesh. Don't worry about how thick the cylinder is. I'll press tab to go back into uh, object mode just so I can select that cylinder. Don't worry about how thick it is. We can always change that later. Uh, it really doesn't matter at this point. Okay, let's go back to the bone because we actually want two bones. We want a handle of the lightsaber, and we want the shaft on the lightsaber. So I'm going to select the main part of the bone in edit mode and I'm going to press W. That will bring up my specials menu and I'm going to select subdivide. I want to subdivide the main part of this bone. So W, subdivide. 
And now I've got two bones in the same armature, and I can drag this little middle ball by right-clicking to select it straight down. So now we have a handle, a bone, and a lightsaber blade bone. Okay. Um, next, we actually want to add what are called empties to our scene. But to add empties, you have to be outside of edit mode of the bone. So I'm going to go back into object mode of this uh, bone. And again, with our 3D cursor right in the middle of the scene, so I'll press Shift-C on my keyboard, I'm going to add an empty. So Shift-A, and it's not a mesh, it's just right here, empty. And I would highly suggest you add the arrows empty. You'll see why in a few minutes. There is an arrows empty. It actually gives us the letters at the end of these uh, tips. And I'll press S to scale it down. We'll make it smaller. Now, I've got an empty at the bottom, the very middle bottom of the handle of the lightsaber bone. That's what I want. I now also want to have another empty that's about the same at the top of the handle because those two empties will follow markers that we track uh, from my original footage, which I have not yet showed you uh, in this video yet. Let's go ahead though and select the armature, the bones, and I'll press tab to go into edit mode of them. I'm going to select that ball in the middle between the uh, lightsaber blade and the handle, and I'll press Shift S on my keyboard. Shift S will bring up the snap menu, and I can select cursor, that's my 3D cursor, to the object that I have selected, which in this case is that orb. So with that orb selected, I'll press Shift uh, S, and then cursor to selected right there. Okay, I'll press tab to go back into object mode, because now I want to add another in object mode, um, empty. So I'll press Shift A, uh, we're at arrows empty, and now with it selected, I'll press S to scale it down, and we are good to go. Speaking of my footage, I shot this footage earlier today. I'll just go to my desktop and open up the folder where my footage is. If you are not sure how at this point to turn a movie file that you've shot into a sequence of images, again, up in that card in the top right of this video, you'll find a link to, I think it's part four in this video series, at the beginning of that video, I show you how to turn a video into a sequence of images, so I'm not going to go over that again in this video. I've shot myself uh, in my storage room with my toy lightsaber. Uh, let's go ahead and close that and close that and go back into Blender. We'll bring that footage in in just a few moments. But first, we want to control this lightsaber with um, these two empties that we're going to be linking to my video when I track the two points um, on my lightsaber handle that I'm holding in real life. All right, let's go ahead now and parent the bones to this bottom empty. This bottom empty is going to control the entire armature. So let's select the bones and hold shift and then right click and select the bottom empty and we'll press control P. That will make the first object we have selected a parent of the second object we have selected. In this case, the bone to the empty, control P and set parent to object. So now the empty at the bottom of the handle is the parent, and so if I press G to grab it, the bones move around as well. I'll press Z so you can see that a bit better. But what about this top empty? Well, we want this top empty to be linked to the top of the handle, in this case, the top of the handle bone. But if we move this empty up or around, we want the handle to stretch to wherever this empty is. So what I'll do is I'll select the bones in object mode. I'm going to switch now over to pose mode. This is how you actually pose the different bones when you're animating. But in pose mode, what I'll do is I'm going to select um, the handle bone and I'm going to add a bone constraint. And so you do that with the bone selected and up here in the properties window, you'll see a little bone with a little link next to it. That's the tab for bone constraints. And I'm going to add a stretch to constraint to that selected bone. So I'll do that. And it turns green because it has this kind of constraint on it. We need a target. In this case, I'll click in this little area. And I'm going to select empty.001. That's the second empty I created. It's the top empty. So now, if I select that empty and press G, that bone, and I'll right click to put it back. I'll go into solid view with the Z key. That bone will now stretch to the empty that I'm now moving around. I'll right click to put that back. Um, but you'll notice that when I grab that top empty and move it, and move it far away, that bone is getting stretched and it gets thinner. I don't want that. In fact, the entire thing gets thinner and this gets longer proportionally. I don't want them to get thinner. So I'm gonna select um, my bottom bone. Again, we're still in pose mode. And I'm gonna turn down in the constraints options here, 
the volume variation. Right now it's set to 1 or 100%. I'm going to click and drag and move it down to 0. And so now if I grab that little empty and I press G, you'll notice that the bones don't get thinner or fatter if I make it much, much smaller. That's what I want. Okay, so if I grab the bottom empty, I can move that one around. And if I grab the top empty, if I can find it, I'll press Z so I can see it in wireframe. I can move this lightsaber around. Great. I'll undo a few times. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. And we want to attach the cylinder now to our bones. But first, I'm going to make our bones narrower. So I'm going to select both bones. And I believe I can press Control Alt S. And if you press Control Alt S, you can scale a B bone's width and depth but basically it's thickness and I'll scale inwards by dragging my mouse and I'll click right about there. Now we have to parent the mesh, the cylinder, to the bones with automatic weights so that this bone will control the lightsaber itself, the cylinder. But first what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and select the cylinder. We want to make it rounded at the top. So I'm actually going to go to object with the cylinder selected and I'm going to select apply rotation and scale. And what that will do is when we actually round out the top of the lightsaber cylinder by using the bevel tool, um, it'll bevel proportionally or not proportionally, just it'll bevel at a 45 degree angle uh, compared to the top of the uh, lightsaber's edge. So if I were to try to bevel that now, um, it would not bevel nicely, it would go way too far down. But also I'll go to object with the cylinder selected and apply and rotation and scale. So now I'm gonna go into edit mode in the cylinder. I'll press tab and I'm gonna select the top face and I'll press control B. Control B is bevel. And as you can see now it's beveling at basically a 45 degree angle. But if, when I press control B and drag a little bit, I wanna scroll up. Uh, not too many iterations, don't go crazy with tons, but uh, just so it gets kind of rounded looking. Perfection. Let's go ahead and press tab to go back into object mode. I think we're almost ready, but we don't actually want the lightsaber to go down that far. So I'm going to go back into edit mode. I'm going to select that bottom face. I'm going to move it up so it's almost at the place where the lightsaber blade meets the handle. Uh, so I'll press 1 and 5 so I'm in front ortho and I'll zoom in. I want this um, mesh to go just below where that empty is, marking the point where the handle meets the blade. Okay, I'm also going to actually make some loop cuts, so I'll press Control R, that'll give me that purple edge, and I'm going to scroll up to make more of those cuts, and I'll click and then right click to put those new edges uh, evenly across and centered across the entire blade of the lightsaber. I'm going to press Tab to go back into object mode, and the last thing I'll do before we're basically done the lightsaber is I'm going to parent the mesh to the bone with automatic weights, but I actually don't want this bottom bone to influence the mesh at all. So I'm going to select the bottom bone, we're in pose mode, and we're going to go to the bone tab, I believe it is, and I'm going to uncheck deform with this handle bone selected. That means when we parent the mesh to the bone, this handle is not going to affect the mesh at all. Okay, I think we're ready. I'm going to select the mesh, hold shift, right click and select the top bone in pose mode, and I'm going to press control P to set the parent, and we're going to use with automatic weights, armature to form with automatic weights. So I'll click right there. And now, if I grab one of the two empties, in this case the top one, and I press G to move it around, that mesh of the lightsaber moves around too. Perfect. I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. Um, I don't really care yet how wide or thick the lightsaber is. I can adjust that later, of course. But we basically have now a functioning lightsaber. The last thing I'll say and, and do is one last change is that if I want to make the lightsaber extend when it first uh, turns on and then uh, shrink down when it turns off, I want to actually scale this um, blade bone uh, just using the S key. But right now if I tap the S key, it'll scale that uniformly. It'll make it narrower as well as shorter. I don't want that. I just want it to, to scale up and down. So over here in the properties panel, I'll click on this little plus, I can stop this bone from scaling on the Y and X axes um, by locking the axes over here. But be careful if I just lock the X and Y axes just so I can scale on the Z axis and I tap S, 
it's not scaling the right way. And that's because these three axes refer to this bones local axes. And if I switch down here with the bone selected to my gizmo um, local orientation, you can see that this bones um, local Y, the green axis is pointing up the bone. So I'll change this back to global. I'm gonna lock the X and Z axes. So now it'll only scale on the Y. When I tap S, you can see only that number is changing over there. And I can make the lightsaber go down to negative or grow as far as I want to go. Perfection. Okay, let's go ahead and add a material to the lightsaber. But first I will save to my desktop. So I'm gonna go up to file and save. And I'll go to my desktop and I'm gonna save this as VFX dash lightsaber dash 001. In fact, I'll add VFX dash 010 and save Blender file. If you are not in this file set to use the Cycles Render Engine, please go ahead and do that now. If you are in the old Blender Render Engine or the Blender Game Engine, um, the following steps will not work for you. In fact, I would just go ahead and turn on Cycles Render Engine every time you set up Blender from this point forward. It's where Blender is heading. All right, let's go ahead and use the Cycles Render Engine and we're gonna select the mesh of the lightsaber and we're gonna add a material to it. And of course, when you're using Cycles, uh, the way you add materials is different. So with the mesh selected, I'm gonna click New under the Orb tab and we're gonna change the type of surface uh, from just Diffuse, which is just Color, to Emission right there under Surface. The surface we'll be using is the emission shader and I'll click on this little white box and make it totally white and so now if I render out my scene under the camera tab I'll click on render you can see the render happened a little bit slowly there and it's perfectly white and we have a gray background a few issues here we don't want a gray background we want a transparent background because we're going to overlay this on top of video so I'm going to press escape on my keyboard and under my camera tab I'm going to go down to the film section and I'm going to select transparent that will give the render a transparent background so the render will only contain the white lightsaber. The next thing I want to do is under sampling, again so under the camera tab, is I'm going to turn the number of render samples, by default it's 128. That's quite high, especially just for a white um, lightsaber blade. So I'm going to turn this down to let's say 5 and press enter. We don't need to worry about any sampling just for a white lightsaber blade. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I'm actually gonna at this point turn up the dimensions as well. Right now it's set to 50% of the 1080p resolution, but I'm gonna slide that up to 100. Let's go ahead and click render. All right, so the render happened quite quickly and there is a lightsaber. Of course, we haven't made it glow yet. Let's go ahead and bring in my footage and let's make this lightsaber glow. And then in the last part of this video, we're going to track uh, the movement of my lightsaber. I'm holding the handle of it in real life and we're going to make the lightsaber actually follow my movements. And then we're gonna mask out the part of the lightsaber that extends too far into the handle. Okay, let's go ahead and press escape and I'm going to bring in my footage now, but I'm gonna divide this large window into two by grabbing this little cross-hatched area and clicking and dragging it to the left to divide the window into two. I'm gonna make um, this window into a node editor window. So I'll change that just down here and node editor. Um, we're gonna be using uh, compositing nodes for this. Of course, we're compositing here. I'm gonna click on use nodes now and backdrop. And of course, it gives us a render layers node. This actually lets us bring in the 3D um, objects and renderings from our scene into the compositing window. And we have an output composite node. I'm gonna press shift A on my keyboard and I'm gonna input a movie clip. So shift A, add input movie clip. Uh, there's our movie clip node. I'm gonna now combine these two nodes, the lightsaber and my movie, um, together using, and I'll press Shift A, using a color alpha over node. I'll put it right there. And I'm gonna connect the movie clip node just by clicking and dragging the image to the image input port of the alpha over. These are in the wrong order though. You want the thing that's on top, in this case the lightsaber, they plug into the bottom port. So I'll just reorganize those, perfection. And let's go ahead and make a viewer node. So I'll hold shift and left click and drag through that noodle. Uh, when you hold shift and left click and drag, it adds one of these little reroute nodes. And I'm gonna make a viewer node so I can see the backdrop in this window. So shift A, 
and output and viewer and I'll connect up this little um, reroute node to the viewer. So now we'll get a backdrop. You can see it right there. Let's go ahead and bring in my footage. So open and on my desktop again I have a folder of JPEG images um, and I'll press A on my keyboard to select them all and I'll open that clip. All is one. All the images get put into a clip basically. Blender understands that when you uh, name um, images sequentially that that's basically a sequence of images for that make a, a movie file. Okay so there is the video and there's the lightsaber. Let's go ahead and make the lightsaber glow and then we'll actually make it match the handle that I'm holding and we'll make it turn on and turn off. Okay, let's go ahead now and with this render layers node, I'll zoom out. In fact, I'll press control up on my keyboard with my mouse in this window and control up will make that window full screen so now we can see things a bit better. I wanna make this lightsaber glow in two ways. Um, and then we're gonna stack those two different glowing uh, lightsaber blades, one on top of the other and then we're going to overlay that on top of the video. So I'm actually going to add another alpha over node. So I'll press shift A under color. We'll add an alpha over and I'll drag it right into this noodle to add it right there. Now I actually want this video to happen twice or the 3D to happen twice. So I'll drag this output port uh, into both Im input image ports on the alpha over. And so now we get two copies of the lightsaber. I'm going to move that over in the same spot. But I'm going to blur them and color them differently. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to add a filter blur. I'm going to add that to the top, or in this case the bottom um, noodle, which will represent the lightsaber that's on top. And I'm going to blur this one uh, by 5 and 5. Uh, right now we're using a Gaussian blur, but I'm going to switch that to a fast Gaussian blur, just because it'll work better and faster in Blender. And it's going a little bit, maybe a bit more, maybe I'll type in 10 and 10. See how that looks. Looks pretty good to me. We also want this to glow and have like um, more of a glow, not just a blur around it. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to add a filter. It's going to be called a glare filter. And I'm going to add that right after I'm blurring this white lightsaber blade. And we want to change this glare note, a few of the settings in there. I'll change streaks to fog glow and then that won't actually do anything because this threshold is turned up to one. I'm gonna click and slide it down to zero. And now if we look, the lightsaber actually looks like it's glowing, it's brighter, and there's more of a fog around it. And you can play around with the size. If you wanna make it uh, smaller, you can do that. Uh, but I'll just leave it at eight, which was the default. This is the inner lightsaber blade, and it's white, and I wanna make a larger one around it. That's my colored section. So I'm actually gonna select these two nodes, and I'll duplicate them. So I'll press Shift D, and I'll move them up here. I'm going to get rid of that, oops, not that one. I'm gonna get rid of this noodle just by dragging it out. I'm gonna drag each one of these into that top noodle. So now we have um, the same two filters or blurs happening to both lightsaber shafts, but I'm gonna make this bottom one, and it's visually on top, but it'll be below, I have a bigger blur. So maybe 20 by 20, and we'll leave the fog glow the way it is. But lightsaber has a colored larger glow. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and we're gonna make this version, the top one that's on the bottom, uh, be colored. So I'll add a color, color balance node, and we're gonna put it before the blur or glare. So I'll put it right there. And I'm going to change this gain value. That will affect the light, the, the bright colors, the whites in the lightsaber the most. So I'm going to drag it over to green. And as you can see now over here, I have a fairly decent or close looking green lightsaber. It's far too thick though right now. So I'm actually gonna press uh, control up arrow to break out of my full screen view and I'll press V a few times and then hold alt and orbit so I can see that. It's too thick right now. And uh, that's because the cylinder over here is too thick. So I'm gonna press with it selected tab to go into edit mode. Um, I'm gonna press A a few times in edit mode to select the entire mesh and I'll press S and then shift Z S and Shift-Z will let me scale it only on the X and Y axes. I'm going to make it quite a bit narrower, and then I'll press Tab, and I'll click on Auto Render. So next time I change this mesh, it will get narrower, but I'm going to click on Render now, uh, so it'll re-render that scene. And as you can see, it's quite a bit thinner, 
and it's quite a bit thinner over here. So we have a lightsaber uh, blade that looks the way it should. The next step is to track the lightsaber handle that I'm holding in my hand. And I've already edited this video, and I edited it as I was about to export it to a bunch of image files. So starting at frame one um, is the video, and I should be able to press escape over here. I'm actually going to make another window. I'm gonna drag this little cross hatch area straight down, and we're gonna change this top window. I know we have three windows now, but this top right one's gonna be a a movie clip editor window because that's where we do tracking and masking. It's a movie clip editor window. Okay, over here I should be able to open that footage that I already opened down here in the node editor window. So I can just click on this little film strip uh, pull down menu and select the footage, this JPEG that I already opened. It is a video though, it's a sequence, so I can scrub through and watch my video. I start with lightsaber pointing down, I move it up, I kind of do a motion to turn it on. And at that point, the lightsaber should be extending quite quickly. And then I wave it around a bit. And I believe this footage will go until frame 350. That'll be the last frame. So I'm going to change my end value down here to 350. Now, you'll notice that on my lightsaber, and I'll put a big picture of it on the screen right now, it does not have any tracking markers. Um, originally, I did have tracking markers on this lightsaber, but really that creates more of a headache than it's worth because as you know, you don't want to have like bright yellow crosses that you have to put all the way around the circumference of the lightsaber. You have to then get rid of by masking them out at the end. So it's actually easier just to have a high contrast, in this case, um, metal looking silver and black that I can use just as itself to track uh, two points on the lightsaber handle. So I'm going to be tracking two points. One of them is going to be this dark area on the lightsaber handle, and the next is going to be the border between the silver part and this top black section. And those are going to correspond, those two points will correspond with the two empties over here. Once we have two tracks, we can link these two empties to two empties that these two tracks will themselves generate. And I'll show you how to do that later in this video. And, and the light table will look like it's following my handle and it'll look great. The last step will actually be to hide the lightsaber where it goes down too far. In other words, this cylinder will actually look like it's coming out of a lower point and we're going to have to mask out the lightsaber uh, blade where it shouldn't be. Okay, so there's a few steps in there. The first thing I'll do is I'll make this window a bit bigger. I'll drag it over there. Uh, I'll make this one be shorter. And in order to track, I'm actually going to go back to the beginning of my footage. I'll go back to frame one. And I'm going to hold control and left click right in the middle of my lightsaber visually. So right there. If I put it like off to the side, your lightsaber will be crooked. So make sure that you put it right in the center. And I'll scale it up a little bit so the tracker over here can see a little bit of silver or quite a bit of silver and some black there and it's a high contrast area. Under tracking settings what I want to change is the match method. By default if I set a keyframe or position this tracker manually at frame 1 that's considered a keyframe when I position it manually. But I don't want to just match my first keyframe or any keyframe that I make along the way. I want this tracker to always look for the previous frames version of this little image of the black and silver uh, lightsaber shaft. That's because it's going to move and transform a lot. I don't want to always be looking for that version. It can use just the previous frame before it. We're also going to check normalize. And I find this has really helped in this example uh, more than I thought it would. It really helps the tracker actually move along and not get lost. That's great. Also to be noted that we are using a sequence of images and not a video file for this tracking. And that really will help tracking as well. If you try to track using a video file, Blender will not do a good job and it'll lose the track more and it might get confused between frames, which you definitely, definitely don't want. So make sure you're using a sequence of images whenever you're tracking and not a video file. Okay, so I've placed this tracker right on the middle and at the divide between the silver and the black section. Let's go ahead and prefetch our footage. Right now, most of our images are loaded in, but not all of them. So I'll click on prefetch and that will load in all those JPEGs into Blender's RAM. And now I'm going to click on track forward because I'm at frame one. 
and it should do an okay job. But what I will have to do is I will have to adjust where the middle of my marker is to make sure it's always in the very center visually of the lightsaber. Otherwise, you will not get a straight, you'll get a crooked lightsaber. So I moved a little bit. I'm going to go and track backwards now and make sure it always looks like it's in the middle. It looks pretty good. Let's use our arrow key to go up to frame 9 where we last uh, left off, and I'll keep going through. This will be a slower tracking job because we don't have any markers and we want to make sure it's right in the middle. But I'm going to speed up this part of the video, and so I'll be doing it in fast forward, but this will take me about 5 or 10 minutes to do. Alright, I finished tracking the first track, that's the point that's at the bottom of the handle that represents this empty over here. Uh, so if I scrub through my timeline, all 350 frames, you can see that no matter where I stop, the middle of the tracker is right in the middle approximately of the handle, right where the black meets the silver. Uh, there were some really, really tricky points, especially when the handle faced uh, the camera and so I sort of just had to guess I put it approximately in the middle but you should just stay consistent when you add the next marker um, so again there were a few times when it was pretty hard to do but I just did my best and I looked at the path in the direction that it was going and obviously if I was way off um, it wouldn't really look good um, in the end so let's go ahead now and go back to frame one and I'm going to deselect I'll press A to deselect that marker I'll hold control and I'll left click right about there at the bottom of this upper black section right there and I'll make I'll press S to make that about as big as the width of the handle itself and let's go ahead and do some tracking again I'll speed this part of the video up because it'll take me about five or ten minutes to do again Oh, and just a note, I'm going to change uh, the match settings for this uh, marker again to a uh, previous frame and I'll click on normalize. That will really, really help out tracking. Although I found that um, it actually tracks too well, but the markers tend to slide around a lot because there isn't a definitive point for them to track, just an edge for it to track. So you will have to adjust every few keyframes or every frame as you see fit. Alright, so I finished tracking both the top of the lightsaber handle and the bottom. If I zoom out, uh, press A a few times to select both markers and I scrub through, uh, hopefully it stays quite accurately with the center visually of the handle. Uh, again, there were some parts where I really had to guess because of motion blur in the footage or just because the handle was pointed straight at or fairly close to, to at the camera so I couldn't see where each marker should go, but I guessed uh, as best as I could. Let's go ahead now and with both of these markers selected, so I'll press A a few times, I'm going to go over to the tool shelf in this window, so I can click on this little plus here or press T. And I'm going to go to Solve, this second tab down. And again, with these two markers selected, I'm going to click on Geometry. And I'm going to link empties, just like these two empties over here. But I'm going to link empties to each one of these tracks that I have selected. And that will be in the 3D world. So if I have with these markers selected, if I click on Link Empty to Track, it's actually going to put, and I'll move this edge over so I can see the more of this window, it'll put two empties in my scene that have connecting lines, uh, that means a constraint, um, to the camera itself. So if I press zero on my number pad to look through the camera, uh, you can see that there are two extra empties there. And if I scrub through, they move around because they are linked, and I'll press T and N over here. Those two empties are linked in the same position in this camera as these two points are in this main camera. That's what that linked empties to constraint button did. Um, in the uh, tool shelf under solve right under there or link empty to track button right there so if I scrub through they move around and all is good the next step is to link my two empties or parent my two empties on my 3D lightsaber to these two empties so I'm actually just going to press 0 to break out of the camera and if I look at where my footage is right now um, if I kind of look through my camera again, this empty that I have selected is the bottom 
visually I can tell it's the bottom of a lightsaber handle so I'm gonna break out of my camera and I'm gonna go in and with that empty that is the tracks bottom empty select it I'll press shift s shift s brings up my snap menu I'm gonna select cursor to selected that'll put that 3d cursor right where that empty is and now I'm going to take um, this bottom handle empty, which corresponds with this empty, and I'm going to select it and press Shift S again. But this time I'm going to select Selection to Cursor as opposed to Cursor to Selected. So Selection to Cursor, and as you can see now that empty has snapped to the 3D cursor. And if I look at this in solid view, you can see that the lightsaber is now stretching to that point. Let's go ahead and select the upper empty that's linked to the upper track. And I'll press Shift S. I'll say cursor to selected right there. And the 3D cursor will jump there. I'll select this empty of my 3D lightsaber top handle. And I'll press Shift S. And I'll say selection to cursor. So now these two empties that are have letters on them that's why we did that so we didn't select plain um, a plain empty but we selected uh, axes or arrows uh, empty we can tell the difference between the empties that are the tracks empties and our 3d lightsaber uh, handle empties so now I need to parent this empty the bottom one to the trackers bottom empty and parent this one to this one as well so I'm gonna select the bottom empty hold shift right click select the trackers bottom empty and I'll press control P so and I'll click on object so the trackers empty was selected last in this case I'll select my top empty which controls the uh, top of the handle of my 3d lightsaber whoops I'll press escape and I'll hold shift and I'll right click to select the, the top empty of the tracker and I'll press control P and set parent to object. So now if I press Z to go back into solid view I can scrub around and the lightsaber is moving around in my 3D scene. And if I go ahead and press zero on my number pad to see through my camera I'm actually going to bring in my footage as a background. Uh, I'll collapse a bunch of these areas so you can see that a bit better. Uh, there is a section called Background Images that's on the Properties panel, this little plus, uh, the 3D viewport. I'm going to check Background Images and then Add Image and then Movie Clip and Uncheck Camera Clip. That's kind of annoying that that always is the default. And right here I'm going to select our footage uh, image sequence and I'll turn up Opacity so we can see it. So now, looking through my camera actually, I can see a backdrop and it overlaid. And as you can see, the lightsaber is following the footage around quite nicely. If your tracking markers or your trackers slid up and down the handle too much, that's why you're getting a little bit of this. That's why I'm getting a little bit of this uh, shaking around of the length. And it is much too uh, short right now. So I'll select that bone and I'll tap S and I can scale it obviously only on that um, local Y axis of the handle. And as you can see, I've got a pretty darn good looking result. Um, let's go ahead and press escape and I'll move the playhead around. Of course it's not going to render unless I actually change the mesh so I can uh, or change something in my 3D scene uh, and that is because I have over here in my node editor window uh, auto render in my node editor window. Uh, that changes, that re-renders your scene whenever you change something so I've already scale that a little bit. Just scaling the uh, lightsaber blade will trigger a render. Okay, let's go to frame 90 and I'll tap S after I tap escape. I'll make this again a different length just to see how it looks. Perfection. So I actually want to now adjust where this bottom of a lightsaber is. We are going to mask this um, and we'll parent that mask that we use to cover up some of this um, extra lightsaber blade so we don't see it through there. We'll use a mask for that. But I'm going to press escape and I'm going to select that cylinder again, so I might need to press 0 to break out of the... Oh, it's in the middle there. Uh, can I select it? Maybe if I press H to hide that bone, now I can select it. Great. If I press, uh, with that cylinder selected, if I press Tab to go into edit mode, it goes straight up and down again. What I want to do here is I want to select the bottom face of the cylinder and I'm going to move it up a little bit, straight up on the z-axis, so I'll drag it up a little bit. And now if I look at my render, of course I have got auto-render checked over here, so it will actually show me what it looks like. 
the blade has gotten less intrusive into the handle. So I'm going to press escape, I'm going to keep moving it up. As soon as I let go, it'll auto render out. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Let's go too far. Of course, there's an edge loop right there, so I don't want to go past it. It won't let me go past that point anyways. Okay, it's looking pretty good. What if I go too far? I'll press Control plus. I've got that bottom face selected. If I press Control plus, it'll select all the connected faces. So now I can move that way too far up. And it's gone too far. There's now a gap between that diagonal edge of the lightsaber and my lightsaber blade. So I'm going to move it down a little bit. Right about to there. And it's not quite there yet, so I'll move it down. And maybe a little bit more down and maybe just a tiny bit more. And I'm actually going to press escape because I'm also going to scale it a little bit. Um, and what that will ensure is that it does not look smaller down here at the bottom. So it looks like it's coming out and not just getting cut off right there. Not that that's the, the end. Um, I'm going to move that down a little bit, but I'm only going to move the bottom down a little bit and I'll press escape and I'll scale that out a little bit as well. So technically now we could render this out. It looks decent um, if you're not too picky about how the handle cuts off the blade or if that's satisfactory to you, um, you could just render it out. I'm not going to do too much more in this video except for create a few different masks to help us with this effect. In fact, I think the lightsaber blade is still too short, so I'm gonna go back into edit mode and I'm going to drag this down a little bit and it'll auto-render again. Okay, let's do a few renders of a few different frames. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. I've realized that I have not yet animated the uh, lightsaber extending and closing, and there's a few extra little things we have to do there. So I'm gonna press escape. And in fact, I'll do a quick save there, Control S and click. The lightsaber blade, I'll press tab. Right now I'm in edit mode of the blade, I'll get out of there. So actually I've realized that we have not yet edited our trackers enough. Um, what I recognize, and I'm gonna put my mouse in this window and press Control uh, up arrow. Actually, I'm just gonna make that wider and taller. What I need to do here is actually go back and make a few changes to my trackers. Oh, I'll select the handle of the bone actually, and now I'll press Alt H because I hid the other bone, but I have to select one of the bones in order to unhide the rest of them, so Alt H. And so now if I actually select this lightsaber blade bone and I tap S and I scale it all the way down, it's actually, no matter how big or small I make it, uh, unless I actually type in zero, which I don't want to do because then I couldn't select it again, it's still going to glow. And it's still going to give us a little bit of green glow, as you can see right there. And that's actually showing through the handle of my lightsaber. So what I figured out when I was practicing for this video is that you actually want the trackers to go off screen all the way up until the very first frame that you're actually going to see the lightsaber blade poking out when it first starts and all the way up until the very last frame before they, it entirely disappears at the end of, the, of this uh, clip. So I'm going to press escape and I'll make lightsaber its full size again, control Z. And over here in our tracking window, I'm going to select both markers and I have to now decide where it is in the video that I turn on the lightsaber. So let's look at the footage and I scrub through and right at frame, let's say frame 70. So at frame 70, I actually wanna see a little bit of lightsaber, and that means the tracking markers need to be exactly where they are. But in frame 69, I want them to be above the footage and totally out of the video. So at frame 70, I'll use my arrow to go back to frame 70, I'm going to clear the tracks um, from that point or before that point, so 1 to 69. So I'm going to go over here again up to this track tab in the tool shelf and I'm going to press this clear backwards button. So now frame 70 still has a successful track but frame 69 and everything before that does not have a successful track. And so at frame 69, I'm gonna select both of those tracking markers. I'll press A a few times. I'm just gonna put them way up there. And so now you can see the path uh, everywhere before frame 70 is up at the top and then right at frame 70, they are where they should be. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and scrub down and see when I turn the lightsaber off. So it looks like right there. So right at frame 326, that's when I actually press the button, but I'm going to give it a few frames, maybe um, 10 frames to close. 
So at frame 326 or 325 or 326, I press the button and then at 335 I want that to be the last frame where it's still visible. So I'm going to clear the tracks for those two markers after that frame. And so the next frame, uh, in frame 336, there will be no tracking anymore. And so I'll press G with both selected and move them straight up again. So now after that point, they'll be off the screen. Um, does that update, now that I've got uh, these two markers have a different movement, um, does that actually update my empties over here? Let's go ahead and press zero to look through the camera and I'll scrub back to the beginning. It looks like it actually does. If I break out of my camera view, and I scrub back, yes. So if you change your trackers, uh, yes, it will update your linked empties automatically, I just discovered. Uh, that's perfect. So now, read that frame that's gonna start appearing, but I want this lightsaber uh, blade bone to be small. So I'm going to actually scale that down. I'll tap S and I'll make it very, very small, right about there. And of course, it's gonna render it out because I've got auto render turned on. And it's right about there. Uh, I'll press escape. I want to make sure that I'm animating this. So up here in the uh, properties panel of this window, I'm going to animate these values. Right now, scale is one and one for X and Z, but the Y, the local Y axis is going to be animated. So I'm going to put my mouse in that little area and I'll tap I on my keyboard. I will insert a keyframe and it'll turn yellow. And then what do we say? 10 or so frames later, I'll go to frame 70 or 82 rather, and I'm going to scale this up to about the right length. Of course, it'll auto render for me. Uh, so if I let go, if I click, we'll see what it looks like. No, that's not at its full length. I'll press escape. I'll scale that up to about two and a half uh, times. You'll see that number over there. Uh, maybe just a little bit longer, so maybe three, right about there. You see that Y number up there is three. Okay, so I like that. I'm gonna press escape, and then again, to set this keyframe to make sure it knows to get to this about three value um, at frame 82. I put my mouse over this area and press I again. That'll make it yellow. And so now you can see I've got keyframes at frame 71 and 82 of the lightsaber extending out. And right before that, if I go to frame 70 or 69 and I render out an image, I am getting a little bit of green there and I'm not sure why. Uh, okay, so at frame 71, we're at frame 71 right now, that's the first frame where we can actually see the lightsaber down here. But if we go to frame 70, actually that's the first frame that we can see the lightsaber right there. But at 69, it's off the top of the screen. So it is where it is, but unfortunately I set my keyframe in the wrong location. I set it at frame 71 instead of um, 70. What I could actually do there, and you might have caught me on that a moment ago, is I'll make this window go a little bit taller, and I've got my little node editor window right there. Um, I'm going to divide this bottom timeline into two, up and down, and then I'm going to change this upper timeline into a dope sheet um, editor. And as you can see now with this dope sheet window, um, I can move keyframes around. And so this keyframe was at frame 71. I'll select it and I'll press G and I'll move it over one to frame 70. Uh, there we go. So now it'll extend from frame 70 until frame 82. Uh, so that's what I want. So at frame 69 when it should be gone, it is out of the frame. And if I do a quick render, it's not there at all. But in frame 70, I'll do another render it is starting off. And again, we're gonna do a quick mask to cover up that extra glow right there. Okay, let's make sure that the end is working as well. I'll scroll over to the end and we're gonna animate the lightsaber blade. Uh, and I'll press escape over here uh, to make it collapse right leading up to when it disappears. It disappears at frame 336. That means that at that point it needs to be frame 335 is, is last frame. It's going to be totally small at that point. So I'm going to select that lightsaber bone and I'll scale it all the way down to almost nothing. And I'll press escape because it auto rendered. And I'll press I with my mouse over this section here to animate that. And then um, I'm going to go, what frame is that? That is frame 335. So at frame 325 or so, I'm going to make it at its full height. So I'll tap S. And again, it should be about three, right about there. And it's gonna auto render, of course. And so I'll press escape 
and I'll put my mouse over here and I'll tap I. So now the lightsaber should be at its full length. In fact, I'll go to my camera view and scrub around. And how's it looking? It extends out right there. And then it gets waved around. And how does that part look? That was one of the tricky parts right there. The lightsaber kind of moves around in a funny way there. But that's because I couldn't tell where the marker should go. It gets turned off right there. Okay, let's go ahead and do a quick mask. So I'm going to do a quick save though first. Um, over here in the uh, movie clip editor window, um, where is our footage? We're past the end of it. It's right there. What I want to do is create a mask to get rid of this green glow that will show up when the lightsaber is first starting up and when it's covering up too much of the handle. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to press uh, A a few times to deselect all of the markers over here. I'll make this window bigger so we can see it. So uh, the uh, tracking markers are deselected. I'm going to switch from tracking over to mask mode. And we haven't used any masks yet in this video, but we will right now. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to click right about there. I'm going to click right about there and there and there. So I've got four points made and I'll go to mask and we're going to toggle sick like that will close that mask so it's actually a, a skewed rectangle. Um, because I made this counterclockwise now, if I hold shift and left click and drag away from one of these points, shifting and holding shift and left clicking and dragging will allow you to make a feathered uh, area so it feathers between uh, the original line and this green line and I actually want to make it curved like it's curved right there so I'm going to select each one of these points I'll press select the first one and I'm going to press V on my keyboard V brings up the set handle type uh, menu and I'm going to select aligned single right there when you select aligned single you can now make a curve with that point so I'll do the same thing over here I'll select that one V aligned single and so now I can make that curved. So now I can make um, the, the appropriate curve right about like that. And of course, I will have to animate this shape. So I'm going to make it about how I want to be. And maybe a not quite so much feather. Although I might actually want quite a bit of feather, depending on what result I want. And I'm going to select all of these points. I'll press A a few times. I'm going to hold shift and right click this top marker because we're going to parent these masks points to that marker. So I'll press control P on my keyboard and it made the parent this object. I can tell that right there. That little area just popped up. And so now if I scrub around my timeline, I'm actually going to join up my dope sheet and my timeline now. Uh, you can see that that tracker follows the uh, lightsaber handle pretty well. I'm going to have to do some definite uh, animating whenever I see that the lightsaber flips around. Uh, you can see right there that um, I'll need to rotate the mask. So I should go through every 10 frames or so. It doesn't matter until the lightsaber is actually visible. So right at frame 70, I'll turn on record and you can see that the mask is not in the right spot anymore so I'll move that up but with record turned on at frame 70 and it's a process now of just making sure that it looks the way you want to look. Um, I'm going to quickly now speed up the video as I'm going through just every 10 frames or maybe even every 20 frames until I've gone through and lined up that green line with the line at the edge of the lightsaber handle. In fact, if you would like to see right now, I cannot see the keyframes of my mask. If you want to see the keyframes of your mask in case you make a mistake or you just want to see how far you've gotten, you actually need a dope sheet to see the keyframes of these points. So I'm going to again take this timeline and divide it into two and I'll change the top version over to a uh, dope sheet. And if I change this mode from dope sheet over to mask, I can now see where the keyframes are of that original mask. So uh, I have started here and I'll keep going.
All right, so I finished going through um, all about 350 frames. Of course, I don't actually have to make the mask look the way it needs to uh, before the lightsaber is visible and after I've turned it off, so I didn't worry about those sections. Uh, but now we have to go back to the node editor window and make the mask actually work. So I'm gonna make the node editor window uh, bigger again, and I'm gonna put, of course, all these nodes on the screen at the end of the video. Uh, so let's go ahead, though, and find out where this mask should go. Um, this is the alpha over node that attaches the finished lightsaber to the footage and this is the alpha over that um, layers the two layers of the lightsaber the white and the green layers together I'm actually gonna get rid of the entire um, lightsaber itself so I'm gonna plug in a new mask or that mask using a new mask node uh, into this later alpha over that combines it with the footage so I'll zoom in, I'll press Shift A on my keyboard, I'm gonna bring in an input mask node, and I'll put it right about there. I'll plug in the output to the input port of the alpha over the factor input port, and I'm gonna select just the mask that I made. And if I do a quick render out, actually I'll go back to about frame 200 where the lightsaber is still in the video, and I click on render. Ah, the mask is, um, cutting off the wrong side or it needs to be inverted. It's only showing me what should be cut off and the rest is missing. So I'll press escape. Uh, this mask needs to be inverted. So I'll press shift A on my keyboard. I'm gonna bring in a color invert node. So color invert and I'll put it right there. So this mask is actually just a black and white image and so we will invert it. And now as you can see, because I've just already rendered out this frame, it's popped back up and it looks pretty darn good uh, with that mask. If I zoom in, you might see some errors where the outer glow should continue, but uh, we're not gonna get that picky with this video. Let's go to a different frame, let's say right there. I'll render out and it's looking pretty good to me. If I actually wanna get very picky with this, I could make two different animated masks, one for the outer glow so it continues in a nice way and one for the inner white light beam. That way there'll be a nice glow still around the inner white lightsaber blade, but I'm not gonna be that picky. I think we're just about done. I'll do a control S and then click to save. I'll try a few more frames, be one right in the middle of when it's just starting up. Okay, looks pretty good to me. What about at, again, frame 68 or 69? No, we're good. Let's go ahead and go to frame 70. We should see it just start to peek out there, but the mask is cut it off. Again, there are a little few issues here and there, and you could make masks for these if you really wanted to. Okay, so I've run a few test frames to see how it's all looking. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna do a quick Control S to save and I'll click to make the save permanent. I'm now gonna render out to a video. So under the camera tab in the properties window, I'm gonna change my output format from PNG to H.264. Uh, that's a video codec that's very common in all devices and on YouTube. And I'll change the encoding over to MPEG-4, not AVI. So now we have an MPEG-4 file with H.264. Uh, that's the video codec, and it has no audio, so we're not gonna bother with that. I'm gonna change the output location to my desktop, and I'm gonna call this one VFX-10-Lightsaber-001, uh, and I'll press enter and accept. So I'm gonna do a quick save. I'm going to pause the video now and render out the video, and we'll check back in a second and watch the final version, and I'll put the notes back up on the screen for you as well. All right, so let's finish rendering out the video. Um, I looked at it and I was not happy, and I'll show you why. On my screen right now, I've actually rearranged my screen a little bit. I have a 3D viewport over here, and I'm looking through my camera, and of course I have a backdrop over here. Uh, that's done, of course, over here in the properties panel, and you can add a backdrop image, as I demonstrated before. And on the right-hand side, I have my tracking window and my tracking markers. Now, because there are no actual physical dots or markers on the lightsaber, I was getting a lot of jiggling around of these points. And unfortunately, all you can really do is try to be as consistent as you can, because when I rented out the video, the lightsaber was sort of just waving all over the place and it was kind of jiggling and um, getting shorter 
and getting longer quite quickly. Uh, and that's because I have scaled up the lightsaber. I made it originally much too short. And so if I press N on my keyboard over here to bring up the uh, properties panel in this window, um, this lightsaber, if I look at it, the scale of the actual bone is three times as long. It's stretched out three times as long as its natural length. If I were to do this again, I would make the lightsaber bone and the lightsaber itself um, much taller so it wouldn't have to scale so much and then it wouldn't be as susceptible to kind of jittering up and down. Um, the good news is that if you have a video background in your 3D viewport, I'll close that side panel, you can actually play through your animation. So I'll press the play button and you can watch and see the effect and see how much it's actually moving around. So if you notice a lot of jiggling, and there was some there, but it was out of the scene, uh, you might want to go through and just sort of manually track and manually position um, your two tracking markers in your scene. I had to go through and I had to do a, a bit more of that um, as well. Let's go ahead and go through the camera view again. Um, I actually decided that I wanted the lightsaber to stay off a little bit longer before it came on when it starts up. So if I look at the point where the lightsaber starts to turn on, if I zoom in there, it was just rendering some green glow in the middle or at the top part of the handle, just on top of the handle, which I didn't like. So I actually made the lightsaber stay up top for a few more frames. So the very first time you see the lightsaber um, in the video at all is when it's already partially up. And before that, for I think two or three frames, it's up top. And same thing at the end. I didn't like how when the lightsaber collapsed, um, you can watch it as I'm scrubbing through that it was going down to a very short amount, but then it just looked like a green glow over top of a lightsaber. So let's go ahead and do a quick save. I turned animation off, by the way. Let's go ahead and look at the final result. All right, so there you have it. I'm pretty happy with that. I might do a few more things to touch it up, especially regarding the green glow. I might make a second mask for that. But let's go ahead and throw those nodes back up on the screen so you can see them. I'll put them up on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg. And I've already posted the result of this video, that video I just showed, on my Facebook wall as well. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next one. Bye-bye.